good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depends on what time you're actually watching this video. Uh, my name is Mandy Ecology, and um, today I'm delivering this tutorial in the FBA by Canvas. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that the Kingston University responded to the coronavirus outbreak and cancelled uh, all the face to face teaching across campuses. So here we go, we're online and trying to deliver this tutorial to you by Canvas. Hope all of you are safe and stayed uh, safe at home. So in this tutorial, which is the tutorial number two, we're gonna do the final elements analysis of an I-beam structure using three-point bending method. Uh, so there is a available guideline for it, which uh, tells you what you need to do a step by step um, on the canvas. So if you go to the FEA or um, final elements modeling or final elements analysis section of your module you'll be able to, uh, to see is a series of a number of the tutorials available for you which we're gonna upload the video from at of it as well for you to make it easier to understand you can access uh, to the Siemens Annex server which is a server we're gonna use through the desktop anywhere and um, also you would be able to download the Siemens Annex on your computer if your uh, computer or laptop supports that um i'm gonna uh, create a forum as well on the canvas for you so if in case you have a question you would be able to communicate with me through there also my email address is available to you um so i'm gonna link everything and put it as an announcement for you on the canvas to make it easier for you to find uh these two material great um uh, so let's begin uh, we're gonna make the IBM structure and the CAD and also we're gonna perform a final analysis, analysis of it using the Siemens NX software and uh, we're gonna do the post-processing and talking about the result we get through that analysis of the beam. So what the uh, tutorial actually says, uh, we have the I-beam with a length of 1.5 meter, both sides has been um, supported and also 500 newtons has been inserted in the middle of it so this one is a three point band test it's called that and um, so what we're going to do we're going to make the real world uh, condition for it in the uh, Siemens NX so what we're going to see uh, we um, think that the beam would bend in the middle or deform in the middle and uh, depends on how much force you're going to put on that. Um, so let's begin the tutorial using Siemens Annex. Okay, we are in the Siemens Annex and I'm gonna make a new CAD model. So if I go to the new and in the modeling, so I'm gonna make a new model. I'm gonna name the part. So let's make it as a I-beam or whatever name we want. I highly recommend to save it on your local drive because having on the card uh, it would make it hard for you so it actually delayed the uh, simulation it would be faster if the uh, server would have access to the drive so I'm gonna make a folder as well because the FEA part it, it creates a few files for you I'm gonna call it NX FEA and this one is a tutorial number two or whatever name you want to call it and this one so I'm gonna open that and here so that's the name of the file that's the folder I'm gonna create and let's start it so name is already started yeah because I was doing that one so I'm gonna call it something else great so we are uh, into the um, modeling environment of the NX software so I'm gonna make a new sketch in the XY plane on the plane I will click OK so it's just a simple line with a length of 1500 millimeter, angle zero, escape, escape. So yeah, it's a 1500 um, millimeter line, a normal line, and I'm gonna finish the sketch. So don't worry about it, it's still it's not 3D, it's a line, so we're gonna use just the line because we're gonna uh, use a one dimension on it and we'll add the cross section later on the final elements analysis side of it. So if you want, you can pause and make that line and come back to the video later. Okay, let's continue uh, and go to the final elements 
section of the software. If you remember what I mentioned, you would be able to go to the file in here. So you have an option for pre-post, which is what we're gonna use or another way. So on the toolbar on the top, if you go to the applications, it's a pre-post section. In the simulation, you would be able to click. So I'm gonna click on the pre-post and on the left side, it's a new fundamentals modeling and simulations. And I'm gonna create a new fam and simulations. So the name of the file, if you remember, so you would add the underscore fam and same for the final summer modeling and simulation tweet. Um, bodies to use, I'm happy to use all visible bodies, um, standard polygon body resolution. The geometry options, because this one just line, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna take the line. So we'll tell the software, it's just a line we're gonna study. Uh, it's an NX Nestrian as a solver, so I don't change that one. And as a type is a structure, I don't change it. So I'm happy with everything, I will click okay. So the name of the solution, I don't change it, but whatever, you can uh, rename it as well if you want. You can change the solver again here. You can change the analysis type. I'm happy with everything, even solution type. I'm happy with the linear aesthetics. Uh, I don't change anything. So it's just a default one. I will click OK. Great. So now we are in the fundamentals modeling environment. So if you remember, this is this one. So usually you don't see that option. So what do you need to do? You need to unhide the simulation file view to be able to see this one. And this is the um, simulation I'm using. This is the previous one. Let me close it down and close this one down. So this is what you would be able to see uh, if you're running this one. So what I need to do, I need to make a mesh. If you remember, the, the first thing we do is a mesh. but because this one is a line, I'm gonna add a cross section for it before I start doing that. What I will do, I will go to the mesh section, I will click on more, and there's a 1D element section because I want to add a cross section or four section to it. So we'll click on that one, and it's a create section which I need to click on it. So what you will see usually by default is on raw, so I will come and click on the IBIM because I'm gonna make an eye beam. So I'm gonna put the different dimension to it. Uh, according to the tutorial, this one should be 50, 50, 50, seven, seven, seven. And if you click on preview, this is what you will be able to see is a cross section by um, 50 and seven. So I'm happy with that and we'll click okay. This is this one, I will click close. But I still I haven't applied on it. So before I do that, I need to make a mesh. So I will go to the more and I will create a 1D mesh. So in the 1D mesh, I make sure I actually click on the C beam because the beam is steady. I need to choose my object, which is this line. I click on the line. I need to put the number of the um, mesh elements. I decided to put 51. Make sure the merge nodes is ticked. So we'll tick it again. I'm happy with the merge node tolerance, the default one. Make sure automatic creation is also ticked and I will click OK. So what do you notice? Uh, if you come to the simulation navigator in here, next to the um, mesh, this plus button appear, which means that actually I have a mesh as a 1D one. You would be able to see that actually I do have a 1D mesh here. So what I need to do, I need to add that four section cross section that I created. So what I will do, I will go to the beam collector, right click to it and click on edit. So in here, I go next to the P beam and I click on edit. So you see that there's an option for four section. So if I click on that next to it, you'll see that actually that's the cross section that I created. So click on that. Also in here, I would be able to choose the material, which is important. Otherwise, without choosing material, the software doesn't know the characteristic of the part you have and you cannot do this study. So let's choose the steel here. Also, it's isotropic, so we'll click OK. So the four section is added, 
the materials added. Great. And OK. But still, I won't be able to see that. If you remember in the first session, we mentioned what you need to do. You need to go to the 1D machine here. Right click on that. Go to the edit display uh, in the display section. Change it from noun to the solid and we'll click OK. So what you will be able to see, actually you have um, I-beam. That actually is great. But bear in mind, it still is one line. This is how we look at it in 3D. Great. So we've done the mesh. Now the next stage, it's um, putting the constraints. So if you go to the simulation file view, now we are in the mesh stage. Come up and double click on the simulation file. And now you see that actually interface on top would change and bring us to the fun elements modeling environment. So I'm going to click on a constraint type. I'm going to make a user defined constraint. So the constraint that we have on the uh, beam on the for the three point band test, we have two constraints on the side, on the right side and on the left side, which they're a little bit different to each other. So I'm going to do the left one first. So make sure that what you're doing, because this one is a line, we're going to put the fixtures and also loads on the nodes. In order to do that, if you go to that area next to the menu, I'm going to use that filter to choose the node. Usually by default is a no selection filter. I'm going to choose the node to be able to just choose the node. Because what you will see, as I mentioned here, is just a 3D visualization when in reality you still have one line. So if I want to just click everything, just choose one line. I want to just choose one node in one of the sides. So I go to the left. If I click on the node, so you will be able to see that I can choose a node in here. So if I didn't activate that filter, I wouldn't be able to choose that one. So we'll click the node. And so on the left, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fix these. So what I've done, I've done the free translation so it's the translations uh, across the x-axis a rotation across the z-axis and i fixed everything else i'll click ok on the other side i'm gonna go to the constraint type again another user defined constraint and to the right side of it or the other side of it make sure the node is clicked in the filter, choose another node. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fix X, Y, and Z translation. So no translation across the X, Y, and Z axis, but rotation in the X, Y, and Z. And I will click OK. Great. So two supports and to the sides. But now I need to insert the force. So I'll go to the load type. And I'll choose the force, normal force. Something is important in here. So if you remember, actually, we're going to insert the force in the middle for the 500 Newton. Um, because this one is in the middle, if you remember, we have 51 elements. 51 elements means we have 52 nodes. So I want to find the middle one, which is 26. So what I need to do, I'll make sure into the filter, I choose the node. I'll go and zoom in to see it actually which one. This one is 27. This one is 26, and this is the node that I'm looking for. So this node is in the middle. So the server asked me, are you sure it's a 26, 25? I will say, no, it's 26. I'm sure that. And it's a 500 Newton. I need to specify the vector. So because I want to put the force on the other part of it. So I'm going to put uh, this one. It's in the Y axis. And I'm going to make it negative Y axis. It comes down. Okay, okay. So what you would be able to see, to support on the side and on the first in the middle. So everything is ready. I can do uh, my simulation. So I will click on the solve and I will click K. So you're gonna use the Annex Nastrand solver, solve my study, done that. So we'll click, no, I don't wanna see the message. I'm fine with that. You see that actually the analysis job manager show that actually the study has been done. I will cancel this one. I'll close this one as well. 
So the result now has a plus sign next to it, which means that actually we have, we do have a result here and it says structure. So if I double click on that, it will take me to the post processing navigator. We've been in the simulation navigator. Automatically, it took me to the post processing. So if I click on the structure, a plus sign next to it, you have the different kind of the post processing. I'm going to use the stress element nodal, so which is the average between the elements and the nodes. And I'm going to go with the one misses. So you'll be able to see that actually the beam that I had has been deflected in the middle. So the amount of stress, the maximum stress is 13.25 megapascal in the middle and to the side. So it's all zero, almost zero or one megapascal. I can animate that as well if you want. I can go to the animation. If I click on animate and play, I would be able to see the animation as well. I can uh, change the frames uh, as well. We can make it faster or slower. Depends on what you're going to do. Uh, so even if you go to the displacement, if I go to the magnitude, let me stop the animation. You will be able to see that actually this is the uh, the formation that I have in the middle is a 0.489 millimeter in the middle um, that um, you see. So great, uh, the tutor number two has finished, and uh, so hope you learn something new. I highly recommend you if you please come back to the video and try to do it um, as well and uh, to learn uh, this tutorial. Please contribute to the forum that I'm going to create. If in case you have a question, you can keep in touch with me through my email or through the forum as well. I will recommend forum because if you ask a question, if I respond to that, the rest of the student will be able to see that. So it would be easier for the rest if in case they have another uh, question, which is similar to your question. So hope all of you are safe at home. Take care of yourself and stay safe at home. Take care. Bye bye.